How's it going, you two? Happy holidays. Um, doing my first telescope review, uh, so bear with me. And uh, the review is going to be on this one right here. This is the Celestron Power Seeker 70AZ. And the, uh, the reason why I want to do a review on this particular telescope is because uh, with Christmas upon us, uh, some of you might be out looking for last minute uh, Christmas gifts. You might be thinking about getting yourself or maybe your kids a telescope for Christmas. So I kind of wanted to do a, uh, a review on an entry level telescope, so to speak. Um, I've seen this one advertised for sale on Celestron's website. I think it's running about $89.95. Um, I've seen other websites run it as high as about $100. But I got this one for a particularly good deal at Walmart. They had it on sale for only like uh, $36. So I thought it was a really good deal uh, for a telescope like this. Um, let's see. The box it comes in, you get some accessories with it. You get a 20 millimeter eyepiece, 10 millimeter, 4 millimeter. Uh, it comes in a red dot finder instead of a finder scope, which is actually pretty nice. Um, it has a three times Barlow lens. Uh, the diagonal is a direct image diagonal, which is nice. It's going to put your, all your images uh, right side up. So you could also use this telescope for terrestrial viewing as well. Uh, it also came with some software. Um, I haven't used the software yet. I'll have to take a look at it. Uh, probably do a, a separate review on that. But just do a little pan around once you see it up close. Have the uh, diagonal. The red dot finder. Alt azimuth mount. Accessory tray. Three eyepieces. And the Barlow. I have to say all in all, I think for the money I paid for it, it's a really, really good deal. So I mainly got this one uh, for my kids to use. This is my, my 10 inch new over here is way too tall for them to be able to look into. So I wanted to get something a little bit uh, down to earth for them to use. Of course I have it fully extended on tripod right now, just so I can be able to stand up and move around it better. Oh no, not too shabby. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the optical tube assembly. Uh, the aperture is 70 millimeters, which is about 2.8 inches. The focal length is 700 millimeters, so that yields a focal ratio of f10. It also has a direct image diagonal, which is nice. Because not only can you look at the sky with this, but you can also take a look at uh, terrestrial objects as well. So the image that you see in the eyepiece will look as it does in real life. You know, mirrored image up, upside down. Uh, remember that. It was nice. Um, instead of a normal finder scope, it has a red dot finder, which is really nice. The reason for that is because most of the uh, finder scopes that come with the cheaper telescopes, they're pretty much worthless. <laughs> uh, but this is much easier to use, which is good because if you have a, uh, a beginner budding astronomer, you definitely uh, want the thing to be user friendly. And basically, uh, after you get this aligned with your tube, just turn it on. And the uh, the laser diode puts a, a laser dot on this uh, glass screen. Of course, you probably can't see it in the camera because it's so dim. Well, you just align that dot onto whatever you want to look at, and then when you're looking through your eyepiece, you should be able to uh, see what you want to see. Of course, you just want to make sure you remember to turn it off when you're done so you don't run out of batteries. Um, one of the negatives about this particular telescope is the focuser tube. It is plastic, not metal. Um, you know, you could have some problems, you know, sagging 
focus your tube. You put a lot of uh, accessories on the back of it. And of course, it racks out forever and ever and ever. But it is, you know, a beginner's telescope. So I'm not expecting to be, you know, made bulletproof. But that's definitely a negative. And it does have a removable dew shield. There's the objective lens. It does have a focus at lock, which is this little knob right here. So when you get it, your image focused. You can turn this little lock knob and it'll keep the focuser still. That way you're not having to constantly focus your image. Alright, now we'll take a look at the mount. And the mount is uh, alt asthma which for a beginner is uh, definitely a plus. Um, equatorial mounts can be pretty daunting for a, the beginning astronomer just because of its complexity. So the fact this has an alt azimuth mouth is, is really nice. Right here is your um, azimuth locking up, loosen that up, you can turn the telescope left and right, which is an azimuth, then we have the altitude adjustment, which enables you to turn the telescope up and down, or an altitude. And right here is the fine control for the altitude. Just by turning this thumb screw, you can slightly and slowly move the telescope up and down. And that gives you some fine fine control. Not too bad. Now the tripod is a little different story. Um, I mean, it's adequate for the telescope, but the problem is, is that you get a lot of vibrations in it. I was actually going to go outside tonight and maybe get some video at the eyepiece to show you its uh, performance. But it's, it's just too windy outside. I did give it a go, but just way too much vibrations. And of course, it doesn't help that I have the legs fully extended either. But, it's a little bit a little bit unstable. And we have the accessory tray that you put your eyepieces in.